Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Air Speed Prime here with my next Avatar merchandise review. This one is going to be for Avatar The Last Airbender, not Avatar The Last Airbender, The Legend of Korra, Book 4 Balance Art Book, the last Korra art book, and as of now the last Avatar art book that's going to be coming out, so uh, we're going to review this book. Um, I'm going to do most of the review behind the camera, and I'll switch to that in just a minute, but uh, here is a look at the book, um, just in a kind of more easy, I suppose, to display way like this. There's the back cover. We've got a Sami on the bottom and then the swamp, ban big banyan tree in the middle. So some pretty cool stuff there. But um, yeah, let's move behind the camera now to get a closer look at what this book is actually all about. So yep, there are the five art books for Avatar and Korra together. Obviously Avatar was the first one released and we got just a complete uh, kind of series, Art of the Animated series, once that whole series came to an end. Then we got the Book 1 Air art book, then Book 2 Spirits, then Book 3 Change, and then the book we're going to be reviewing today, Book 4 Balance. So uh, let's I suppose go through the history. There is the cover for the Avatar art book. Very nice and definitely a good book. Um, though definitely you can tell, you know, like... They, they spread a lot of stuff on that series out over the course of one book. Then, when it came to Korra, they announced that they were going to be going to be doing art books for every single individual book of Korra. And so we got this first one, which is notably smaller than the other ones. It's actually only 144 pages, whereas all the other um, four art books are um, 184 pages. So this book one, one is uh, 44 pa 40, just 40 pages less. So uh, there we go. Book one art book. Um, next up, my favorite art book, including that's including the book four balance one. I still think the book two spirits uh, art book is the best. Definitely the most visually interesting book of uh, Korra, and it makes for the best art book overall. Uh, then released a couple of months ago. Um, while at this stage, the book three art book, probably the one I was the kind of most disappointed by, just because. I felt like they really struggled to fill out uh, 184 pages of uh, really interesting stuff. But uh, yeah, then we have the brand new Legend of Korra Book 4 Balance Art of the Animated Series. Um, just released yesterday in comic stores and it will be out in 12 days from Amazon. If you have place your order, they'll probably be shipping it out soon to get it to you for um, September the 15th. But uh, yeah, let me get these other four art books out of the way and we'll get inside this book right now. Okay, first of all, I'm going to apologize for the camera work. It's just really awkward. Again, it's a pretty big book. You know, I had a huge struggle yesterday doing the poster book review. This one's a bit smaller, but it's still di pretty difficult to do because there's a lot more pages and detail to go over. But uh, anyway, here's the cover. And uh, I, I really like the cover, you know, this image of Korra I think is really cool, just her with kind of Rava, kind of uh, the design coming through, and her in the Avatar state, and the kind of blue spirit colour that's very uh, classic in the show, and then the new spirit portal in the background. Um, kind of spoilery, you know, for an art book cover, but you know, it's been long enough since the series has ended, but... Um, interesting thing about this piece of art that is that it's not new we've seen this piece of art before um, and that was in the book for balance uh, DVD poster which uh, let me bring you over here in my room we can see on my wall I've got a bunch of avatar stuff and right over here is that exact same image of Korra just on a blue background and that's the uh, book for balance uh, DVD poster so uh, let's bring ourselves back over to my desk and we can get into this book properly so yeah there's the front cover uh, book for balance art of the animated series mike dimartino brian Kanetsko, joaquin de santos there's the spine same design as for all of them and cora same dark horse on the back as i showed you earlier on we have the banyan grove tree from the swamp Asami. Our kind of quote is, tell your world leaders to stay out of Earth Empire business, we won't accept their hand-picked dictator. Um, pretty interesting quote, obviously done by Kuvira. They seem to be going with like a kind of quote from the villains on the back of these art books, which very much fits. Um, then we just have um, 
you know, the, the standard uh, kind of description, you know. It's an art book, we're going to get the creators of the show going through it, and uh, never before seen art and so on, and then some reviews. The uh, retail price for this book is $34.99, which is the price in euros that I paid for the book yesterday. So let's get into the book itself. Uh, inside cover, as ever, is a kind of a black and white uh, map of the world. Very nice as ever. Inside cover, we get a blank page and then a sketch of some spirits, which are pretty nice. I always like these just random sketches they put on the page just to kind of fill it out. Our kind of proper full page uh, kind of uh, inside cover image is the statue of Korra in Avatar Korra Park. Very nice. Again, another little spirit sketch here on the kind of... Uh, uh, kind of credits page. Uh, again, they're going to be our three creators over the course of this book, giving some content. And we go into like the publisher is basically the dark horse people who put this book together and stuff like that. Uh, so you have um, people like Dave Marshall, Mike Richardson, Stephen Reichardt, and stuff like that. So we have Wei Wing, Opal, and then on we have uh, uh, Wu on the contents page, and then. Here is the list of chapters. We just have uh, some introductions by the three people who are involved in this book, Mike, Brian, and Joaquin. And then we have one chapter for every single episode of Quora Book 4, except Remembrances. Remembrances doesn't get a mention at all in this art book, um, which is really interesting. And then chapter 13 is Ancillary Art, which um, is like posters and other pieces of art they did that weren't directly related to the actual episodes of the show. Um, and then, as ever, we get a kind of uh, introduction forward from, uh, first of all, Brian, then uh, Mike, then Joaquin. And again, you know, they definitely are just talking about how this is the last art book, the journey that they went on over the five years of Korra and the production, and, and how much more difficult the production of Korra was compared to Avatar, even though they didn't expect it, but how well the fans kind of... I suppose that just how much uh, they appreciate the support from the fans for the second show that they did. And, you know, they give some uh, little kind of hints at hope, you know, like, and Brian says that, you know, like, we are scattering off to explore other creative endeavors. Who knows if and when or in what shape and form we might get pulled back in for another spin of Avatar he's referencing there. And again, you know, Brian says something similar. And uh, we'll meet again on the next journey. You know, there are hints that they're not fully done, but they're taking a break. Which is basically what we know about them. The kind of uh, info on another series so far. But uh, yeah, then we move on to chapter one. And again, like something I've said about all of these core art books that I really love in terms of a general design thing. I love how they do these two-page opening spreads for all of the chapters just a really nice piece of kind of background art over the kind of symbol for kind of the the episode name and stuff like that it's just uh, really fitting for for here this is the town of uh, Yai that we meet in the uh, first episode and then we get straight into Kuvira obviously the main villain of the book and in many ways the main character whose design you need to get I think she was in the book three art book for a little bit, but here they give her her full design and go through the full details of uh, uh, what her design is like. And I think there's preview pages that came out showing this one already, but there's some nice stuff here. And they definitely go into the most detail in terms of text about her as a character and um, a lot of talk about stuff like that. And I really like this sort of detail stuff here where they go into the details of how the stuff like mechanically works, like the different strips of metal and so on it's uh, definitely really interesting explaining how the metal strips work there but there's Kavira and then we get some of these kind of animatics um, kind of storyboards uh, pages which aren't my favorite over the course of these core art books I think it was a huge problem in the book three art book there were like 40 pages of these things there aren't as many in this but um, it's just one of those things where like each one of these um, pieces of art is really good but because it's so small it's hard to get the detail out whereas like the whole point of these big art books is so that you get a really good quality kind of visual on all of these great pieces of art so you know it, it's nice to see but they don't come across I think the best in these books but uh, yeah then we get into Prince Wu and his design Asami and her various outfits that they were deciding on they make it really clear that actually deciding on the outfit they wanted for Asami in book four was kind of a hard thing and 
I know this was one of the preview pages. It was one of the big debates about um, uh, what should the Sammy's actual like design be, and um, a lot of people have been debating like which one of these is their favorite in terms of the alternate ones. Mako only gets these four kind of uh, turnaround images, and they they do mention that uh, he's kind of his new hairstyle is inspired by General Iroh's from Book One. A little bit of ton rock there. Um, this is actually a really interesting page. We get the kind of concept designs for Iki and Janora for book four. That was uh, really interesting to see how different they were. And this was back when, before they'd fully decided on what the wingsuits looked like. And we have some stuff about the hairstyles there. And they talk about how, really interestingly, how integral to a character's kind of appearance and who they are, their hairstyle is, because it's such an important part of their character. They had to get it right, that's why hairstyle is such an important thing in the design process and some really nice background stuff on the town of Yai. Uh, a lot of Earth Empire stuff in this book as you would expect. We get Bolin, Batar, Julie, Varric and some of the other commanding officers in the Earth Empire. Really interesting detail on some of these that um, on everyone's shoulder they go into the details on how exactly the ranks work, the different chevrons and like how uh, three are the commanders, two are just below commanders and then there are some people who have one chevron, and then Batar has a little extra symbol at the top of his to signify he's like second in command. Maglev train. Uh, again, over the course of these art books, there's a lot more technology in Korra. I've really appreciated the kind of uh, really mechanical drawings for some of this technology. It looks really cool the way they did it. And a lot of details that went into like the props and stuff like that of this show. This is an interesting page as well. The the wingsuit designs, the, the initial ones, the they talked about were quite baggy and they didn't make a lot of sense and then eventually they kind of uh, broke it down and managed to get it into this really kind of tight-knit design that they had at the end and they do mention here that I think we'd heard before that the backstory they couldn't quite weave into the show itself was that Asami designed the wingsuits for the airbenders which is canon but uh, we don't actually hear that in the show and then I always like this kind of height chart comparisons and all the airbenders. Uh, Kai, uh, Boomy, Henson. Um, there's our piece of art from the inside cover, inside of Wu's hotel, I believe. Um, Re Republic City Wilds. Then we go into Core Alone, definitely a memorable episode with the uh, earthbending fight arena here that uh, we found Korra in. Very unusual place at the start. Everyone was like, "What's going on with Korra this book?" So uh, this is a good page actually to get to see their design for Korra and again they, they talk about how even though this wasn't her final book four kind of outfit they knew they had to get it right because she was going to be in this outfit for half of the book basically and they had to get you know they basically had to introduce us to older Korra in this outfit so they had to nail it and they really talk about how well they got that and there's our MMA fighter and stuff like that the darker the, the kind of dark almost creepy town she's walking around Korra when healing, Katara, and more background stuff, another screenshot page, background stuff, and this is this is an interesting one as well, um, they talk about how uh, Ryu Ki Hyun, um, he was the one who did the art for this, uh, <laughs> for this uh, image of Aang here, kind of, uh, that's reminiscent of his kind of spinning marble trick, and they mention here that he was the one who did the original key animations for Ang doing this technique originally, and then he was the one who put this piece of art together as well. It's very fitting when they talk about how, like, 10 years on, he was doing the same thing, just with the character a lot older. So that's really interesting. Um, but, uh, yeah. Some really cool stuff there. And we're moving into the Coronation episode. And we get to see the waiters and stuff like that. More of the city, which is always nice to see. There's Toph and some of her older designs for her. And the interesting thing they talk about here, actually, is that... Something I don't think a lot of people have brought up, but just this idea that... We saw Toph when she was in her kind of, I suppose, middle age, aged in book one in flashbacks. And she seemed quite tall. Yet, all the animators actually wanted to kind of put her down to her 12 year old height when she was younger and so they they talked about how that doesn't make a lot of sense so what they did was they kind of 
they made her more slumped over to where they keep the height um, in terms of like if she stood up straight she'd be the same height as she was from like the book one air flashbacks but because she's older she's hunched over and so she's closer to her kind of 12 year old height so that was a pretty cool explanation more storyboard um, and some more stuff about um, some more scenery shots um, there that's all we get of Azumi here they talk about how they they wish they could include more Fire Nation in the show and more Azumi but they didn't really get the chance to um, Eska Desna Varric and some of his inventions more background stuff then we go into the calling episode with the swamp in it and we get more of the air kids here and the town they go to visit to search for Korra there we have they don't name these guys which I was a little bit annoyed about so I'm going to continue calling them Mario and Luigi um, and then uh, Brian talks about how how much detail he put into this random map that was just on the table in that episode that he spent so much time like making this perfectly correct in terms of how he saw the Earth Kingdom like topographically and stuff like that so a lot of detail into j even just some of the random props some of the really nice uh, kind of swamp and vine images from the swamp continuing with that more storyboards enemy at the gates Wayne wing this is really interesting because they explain the difference between Wayne and wing because I think they're probably two of the characters that n no one in the fandom like knows which one is which unless they specifically say like that the other character is named Wei, like Wei says Wing or something like that. Here they explain that, okay, Wei, his hair parts, um, hair parts from his right to left, armband is on his left arm, necklace and belt are rounded. So you can sort of see there the belt is rounded, whereas Wing's belt is kind of pointy. Um, same with their way their necklaces are and again. So um, that's really interesting. So just uh, way is left, wing is right. This is kind of the idea they're going for here. And um, more storyboards, more Earth Empire soldiers. There are the different chevrons again to signify rank. The tank we didn't get to see a lot of, but they wish they could have done more of. Mecha suit again. I really like these mechanical drawings explaining how everything works, especially this top uh, section here. Very nice. More background stuff. Again, you know, I'm, I'm trying to go through some of this stuff quickly, so this video isn't incredibly long, just to give you a general look at the book. Kavira with messed up hair, and uh, obviously the, the hallucination of Korra with the kind of, uh, you know, on Kavira's body and the whole symbolism they're going for there. And they mention here how um, Brian Konetsko did this art, and he drew this, so that's interesting. Everyone in their pajamas. More storyboards. Um, uh, uh, Zofu citizens. Um, a lot of just. This is one of those pages where like it really stands out to you. Like these characters, you don't even notice around Zofu when you're there in the episodes, but they had to spend time specifically designing individual faces, having the same style of clothing, but all being different. You know, different. Um, designs for the men, the boys, the girls, the women, and just an incredible amount of detail that goes into that stuff. More scenery. Then we go to Reunion. Obviously, we know what's coming up in this episode. We're going to get to see Korra's, uh, her proper avatar design coming up soon. There's Baraz and Anna. The restaurant. More stuff, Grandma Yin, Cousin 2, uh, Sammy's new shot glove, and then here we go. Korra's uh, official Book 4 outfit design that when it was re revealed, everyone was so impressed with, and I do really like the design, and I like what Brian uh, explains here, and that he has, he has major regrets about, for Book 3, returning to the Book 1 outfit for Korra in that book. Whereas he, Brian, loved Korra's book two outfit, and as did I, I thought that was a much better design than the book one one. And so he talks about here how this is meant to be a balance between the two. The top is basically book two, the bottom is kind of more book one, but it's made to make her look more mature and more of a fully realized avatar. It's really cool stuff. 
back into Beyond the Wilds. That's a, I really love this image here. Just, just anything I suppose referencing the fact that Rava is part of the Avatar, I absolutely adore in the Avatar universe. Um, it's like almost to the point where I'd like to see Aang interact with Rava at some point. That's something I, I need to happen at some point. Um, the, the kind of Bolin's ladder book design, everyone covered in slime. Um, Zaheer. So here's prison, and um, this is a really cool piece. They actually hear the amount of detail gone into this uh, prison. Operation Bay Fong. Again, some props, a lot of background stuff in the hangar where they were making the cannon and stuff like that. Maglev train, Spirit Wild, spirits. Always love pages like this. There's that uh, uh, dragon eel spirit that uh, called Korra out for being mean to spirits when it wasn't really true. Definitely they need to come back to this whole spirit issue, but some really nice designs here. Karak guy appearance in the book. There he is, even though he's not colored um, orange, but he's right there. How Kuvira's uh, kind of uh, weaponry works. Kuvira's gambit, we're getting towards the end here. Wayne Wing in armor. Julie in her new outfit towards the end of the book. Some scenery inside of the Colossus and then the, the design for the Colossus always really amazing here seeing how they just just something like okay it's a really cool design in general but just then seeing like this is a close-up on the legs and how detailed it actually is here's a close-up on the hands which are like insanely detailed day of the Colossus everyone in their kind of battle kind of pilot outfits here Hiroshi rest in peace um, more designs of the city because we got to see a lot of it during the fight here. Um, some really detailed stuff here for Republic City. Definitely amazing pieces of art. Everyone with the paint bombs. Design for the Dragon Bird humming suit. Uh, I said that completely wrong, didn't I? Dragon Bird. <laughs> dragon. Where did Dragon come into play? Uh, Hummingbird mech suit. Ah, wh wh what am I saying? Hummingbird mech suit, wow, I, words. Uh, Spirit portal, always looks amazing in the middle of Republic City. Last episode, the last stand. Some really nice lighting effects here on the kind of uh, power plant of the, uh, col uh, the Colossus. There's some storyboards of uh, Mako's um, sacrifice moment. And these actually do look really cool in storyboards, actually. This scene looks great. And um, obviously there's where the final battle takes place. Really interesting look at kind of the city when the explosion takes place. And then just the various stages of the kind of formation. Storyboards of that moment. Really nice shot of the spirit world location that that portal leads to. Uh, injured Mako. Messed up hair core. Wedding, wedding stuff towards the end here. Everyone in their wedding outfits. The band that plays, including Tano and stuff like that. And of course, probably the page a lot of people are waiting for. Storyboards for the Korasami ending to the show overall. And there's the uh, basically one of the final pages of art in terms of the last... Uh, before we get into ancillary art. And again, Brian Konetsko has some nice words to say about it and how uh, important it was for them to get this right. And then we move into ancillary art. Uh, just some... Really nice pieces. There's the NYCC exclusive poster. Some interesting pieces here by Angela Song Muller. Um, here's a concept art for the cover for this book, but uh, obviously it was very similar to this in the end, but uh, slightly different. Um, some uh, really interesting stuff here. Obviously um, the, all the characters taking uh, photos in the photo booth, including Pabu. And again, we're getting towards the end here. So some nice Random pieces of art, I suppose, the best way to explain this. First promo shot uh, showing us uh, Core's Book 4 design. We've seen this on Tumblr from Brian. Really nice double page spread there. Women in Engineering uh, kind of uh, poster that you see throughout Core in the background. And another Core Sammy piece that a lot of fans are really, really appreciated Brian putting out the uh, Turtle Duck kind of uh, scene. 
Turtle Duck Date Night, it's called. There it is in full. And then we end with uh, this nice sketch here of Julie holding Varric. So, you know, there is some very nice uh, stuff over the course of this book, for sure. Um, definitely, I think it's, it's, a, it's an art book worth getting because, one, it's the last one for the last book. You can tell they put a lot of effort into this one. Um, and definitely compared to the book three art book, and even the book one art book, it's, it's definitely one worth getting. I'd probably rank this as my second favorite Korra art book after the book two uh, Spirits art book. But this is really, really good book. Um, I appreciate how they didn't use too many uh, storyboard pages, as you saw going through that. There's a lot of interesting designs, seeing the characters grown up. I still wish they'd focus a little bit more on the characters in these art books, in that Korra's new book four design got touched on for like a page and a half, uh, like half a page. When for me, I would have like devoted a lot of time to the whole process behind that, but that's just a common criticism I've had of these art books in general. So yeah, I definitely recommend this, you know, uh, if you don't want to pay thirty four ninety nine for it and get it really soon, you know, by all means wait for Amazon to release the book and get it for a, a decent uh, bit cheaper and order it online. But for me, I was just happy to add this to my uh, art book collection that you saw earlier on, and I, I think it's a worthy addition to anyone's collection. It's just a great piece of Avatar merchandise. So that's been the review. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts were. Thanks for watching this video, and bye.